Okay, so this video will be about uh, new features added to pivot tables in 2018. So let's create a pivot table. This is not gonna be a video covering pivot tables, uh, like basics. If you're trying to learn how to do basic pivot tables, I have a video covering that, please watch that. This will be particularly about new changes and nice features added in 2018. So I'm gonna go under data and pivot table. I'm gonna create a pivot table for my data. So in my data, I'm going to use sales as my values to sum them up. And I'm gonna break it down by one of these. So for now, I'll use region. So I'll go ahead and do rows as region and my values as sales. So that's our basic pivot table. Now let's get to some new options. So the first option that is nice is that now we can view our numbers as a percentage instead of just looking at hard numbers. So right now we have all of these numbers and we can see what those numbers are, but what if we want to see what percentage of our sales is in Midwestern, what percentage is here and so on. So now we can easily do this simply just by going here and see under values, I brought sales and we're doing some of those. And then on the right, we have show as, and right now it says default. So if I open that, I have these options. So right now I want to show, so these you will have to figure out which one you're gonna need depending on your situation. Right now what I want to do, I want to show this numbers as a percentage of this total all the way down. So therefore I'm going to choose percentage of column total. I hit that. That works. Now, as of right now, if I change this to percentage of grand total, it's really gonna be the same thing. So to see the difference, I'm actually going to just add another values field. And I'm going to use actually the same one. I'm gonna use sales. And I'll drag this new one above like this. Now, if you do multiple breakdowns, let's add something to our rows. Let's break it down by brand. And then we could move that to columns. So now let's see what happened here. Right now, see this says 1187 and this says 4.8%. So what's happening right now is because when I was building this pivot table, I chose this to be the percentage of the grand total. And grand total is this number all the way in the end that's 1.2 million number. So right now, as we're looking at these numbers, it says that this number is 4.8% of that grand total here on the right, because I chose grand total as the option. Now, if I switch this to percentage of column, it's gonna look at the column. So now we're looking at this column total and we can view them as a percentage of the column. So this will add up to 100% as the column total. So with that, let's simplify this. I'm gonna remove this brand out of here. That's my pivot table. Now we can view things as a percentage of the column grand total or the row, which is nice. The second grade feature added now is grouping. So what is grouping? So let's get to multiple types of grouping. One of the most useful types is gonna be grouping dates. But for right now, since I have this type of pivot table, I'm going to show you how to group text. So right now we have Midwestern and we have these other regions. I want to show Midwestern as Midwestern and I want to combine all of this together as other regions. So I can simply just go and highlight these three regions, right click and then do create pivot group. And this is going to happen. Now you can see how we have this little, you know, boxes we can actually open and close this. So you can see how we get the total if we close that button. Now it does show us this Midwestern total in the middle. We probably don't want to see that. We can remove that by simply going here to the right and see how we have region show totals. I'm going to remove that and it's gonna remove our totals. So now we don't see those totals and we just have this. As a default, it creates this name, which is basically like a combination of those three. If you don't like that, you could just override it. So it's a little funny how this overriding works, 
but there we are now it's other now i can close this down there it is so this is other total this is midwestern if you want to see those details you can click on this it will open those details and you could see them so that's one grouping if you're just grouping some text together now i'm going to close this close this now the next thing i want to show you is actually let's remove this one too is grouping dates so i'll go ahead and take this date column and add it in my rows now we have individual days you can simply just right click on one of those and again create pivot date group and you can see we have tons of different options we can use we can use day of week so now this gives us how much sales we do each day we can right click that and change any time so if we want something like month that gives us this now this is just month if you have multiple years it's gonna join all years in this january and sum them up if you have multiple years and you want to actually show those years you can do year month as the option there it is that's our grouping we can also do year which is something you'll probably be interested in anyways it's just very easy just right click on one of those dates go here pick whatever option you want and you have your grouping if you want to go back just go back here and ungroup and now you're back to regular days so that's how you can simply group dates simply drag the date and then right click on one of them and group them finally i want to show you how to also group some numbers let me actually switch to a different data set really quick all right here we go so now we have this new column age in this data set and we would like to do some analysis on uh, our customers and see what age group we sell to so we go ahead and create a pivot table out of this now i'm going to drag age under rows and i'm going to do sales as values so this just gives us the total for each age now we can simply just right click because these are numbers we can actually group them right click and create pivot group rule now we have this now because we have numbers we have to use this interval size depending on what size you want to group so if i do five i'm gonna hit okay and this is gonna take and create buckets of five if i change this and change it to 10 it's going to give me pockets of 10 so you can see how we get from 0 to 9 10 to 19 20 to 29 30 to 39 and so on another way of looking at this you may want to just look at this starting from 18 and go with 10 years buckets so i'm going to do 18 we do have some sales to people that are less than 18 so you'll see what happens in this case so i'm going to do minimum 18 hit OK and I'm going to go by 10. So what happens now we have this less than 18 bucket that stays here and then everything else goes by 10. That's nice too. If you don't want to start from 18, you want to start from 20. Again, it's the same thing, right? Just go here, switch, minimum 20 and we're going by 10. If you want to go by 5, just go and change it. Here we go. So that's how easy it is to group your numbers, group your dates, and really group your text. Another interesting thing is that you could actually use sales for rows and for values. And right now this doesn't make a lot of sense, but we can now group this. I'm gonna try 100 as an interval. And there it is so now we're basically grouping our sales by buckets and we can see sales that were between 0 to 100 how much of our total is that so that's that so if we want to see it as a percentage again we can go here and 
percentage of column total. We can see that 22% of our revenue came from sales that are between $300 and $400. And those are some changes that are worth mentioning in new 2018 pivot tables. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.